On February 27, the White House asked government agencies to ensure that all federal government devices and systems are free of the Chinese video sharing platform, TikTok, within 30 days. The U.S. Federal Chief Information Security Officer said this was to protect our digital infrastructure and to protect the security and privacy of the American people. The next day, at a regular press conference of the Chinese Foreign Ministry, a Foreign Ministry spokesperson responded. The United States, the world's number one superpower, is so afraid of a mobile phone application that young people like so much that they completely lack any self-confidence. We firmly oppose the U.S. side's wrong approach of overstretching the concept of national security, abusing national power and unreasonably suppressing the companies of other countries. The U.S. government should effectively respect the principles of market economy and fair competition, stop unreasonably suppressing the relevant companies, and provide an open, fair and non-discriminatory environment for companies of all countries to invest and operate in the U.S. Interestingly, instead of raising Chinese netizens' anger against the U.S., China's response provoked a chorus of mocking laughter at the Chinese Communist Party, or CCP. On the Chinese social media platform Weibo, a large number of netizens followed the post, and more than 2,000 comments were deleted, with only a handful visible. The netizens wrote, too funny, it's killing me. Funny, a place that can't even use Google, that's pretty confident. Who's not so confident? The idea of Twitter, Facebook, ChatGPT comes to mind somehow. Don't make wild, malicious associations. What we fear isn't just an app, it's the entire extranet. Be confident and take down the wall. If you don't understand, just ask, what does the wall mean when it comes to the inside and the outside of the wall? I've never heard of TikTok. I've never used it. As if we can use it. The Chinese government launched the Great Firewall in 1998 to block the internet. At the same time, China's online censorship is extensive. Any websites within China that contain inappropriate content are subject to direct administrative intervention by the government. TikTok, a product of the Chinese company ByteDance, is mainly targeted at overseas users. In China, it has another version called Douyin. The two versions are similar in function, but there are also differences, including the different rules for promoting video content on the platforms. So, what the Chinese Foreign Ministry spokesperson said stirred up unpleasant memories among Chinese netizens. According to a recent report by research firm Sensor Tower, TikTok was the world's most downloaded app in the first quarter of 2022. In the same quarter of 2021, it surpassed 3.5 billion historical downloads, ranking fifth in the world. Together, Douyin and TikTok have more than 1 billion active users worldwide each month, including more than 4 million users in Taiwan. In the U.S., there are more than 80 million active users. According to the Pew Research Center, 67% of American teens between the ages of 13 and 17 use TikTok. A poll by Forbes also shows that Americans have spent more time on TikTok than any other platform in recent years, making it the most influential Chinese media for Americans. In addition, the report, Digital 2022, released by We Are Social, an online data research company, shows that TikTok has 7.38 million adult users in Australia. TikTok uses a big data system to analyze the content users like and recommend the content that each user is interested in. Although videos can be uploaded on INS, Facebook and Twitter, they are far behind TikTok in terms of editing, picture quality and other aspects of uploading. On the surface, TikTok is simply a social media platform that provides short videos, but many users don't know the hidden security risks and concerns, let alone the close relationship between its parent company ByteDance and the CCP's propaganda department. In October 2022, Forbes reported that after comparing the resumes of hundreds of ByteDance employees on the job-seeking social platform, LinkedIn, it was found that at least 300 of the company's employees had worked in the CCP's official media, CCTV, Xinhua News Agency, Global Times, and other units. Among them, 15 were employed by the CCP's official media and ByteDance at the same time, showing ByteDance's close ties with the CCP's propaganda department. As early as May 2016, the CCP authorities required Chinese internet companies to accept 1% of state-owned capital as special management shares. ByteDance is of course no exception. 
The national intelligence law promulgated in 2017 requires Chinese citizens and organizations to support, assist, and cooperate with the CCP's intelligence work. In recent years, many governments, scholars, and experts have warned that TikTok has the problem of illegally collecting users' personal information. It's like a weaponized spy app. All operations and frequently used keystrokes on the phone will be recorded by TikTok and sent back to China. Like all apps, TikTok has the potential to become a gateway into a user's entire phone. As long as a mobile phone has an app, it has the potential to become a bridge connecting every corner of the mobile phone, said Michael Daniel, executive director of Cyber Threat Alliance. This could include surreptitiously turning on the phone's microphone or camera without the user knowing, and TikTok goes even further. Australian media reported in August 2022 that a report published by Felix Krauss, a research and development person formerly employed by Google, said that when a user opens any link within the TikTok app, TikTok monitors all keyboard activity and touchscreen activity, which may include passwords, credit card information, or other sensitive information entered by the user. Krauss's research analyzed how TikTok's code works in Apple's iOS system and found that the TikTok app doesn't open web links through external browsers such as Safari or Edge, but uses the browser in its own app to open links. The JavaScript code embedded in the app enables it to monitor all keyboard and touchscreen activities of the user. TikTok claimed that Krauss's report contained incorrect and misleading information and that their app didn't collect user information. But Krauss responded that theoretically they could track the information at any time in the future if they wanted to. Of the roughly 20 apps Krauss looked at, only TikTok doesn't allow users to open links within the app through the phone's default browser. The Australian network security company Internet 2.0 released a data survey report in July 2022 indicating that by analyzing the source code of TikTok's Android 25.1.3 and Apple iOS 25.1.1 applications and testing, it was found that TikTok will retrieve other apps that are currently running on the phone and the ones installed on the phone. In theory, this information is enough to map the usage habits of mobile phone users. TikTok checks the location of the user's device at least hourly and can also obtain the user's contacts. If the user refuses, it will keep requesting until the user grants access. TikTok also collects many device details on Android, including Wi-Fi usernames, SIM card serial numbers, device voicemail numbers, GPS status information, active subscription information, full clipboard access, and more. The report also said that the TikTok iOS 25.1.1 servers had connections to China. Although TikTok claims that user data is stored in the U.S. and Singapore, the report states that the IP addresses analyzed are in China and change frequently. From the various IP addresses, it can be seen that they are actually connected to Guizhou province in southwestern China. The report concludes that TikTok's mobile app is built on a culture that doesn't value the principle of privacy, and most of the permissions it requests and the device information it collects aren't necessary for the app to run. The Forbes report also mentioned that ByteDance's internal monitoring department plans to collect information on at least two U.S. citizens who have never been employed by ByteDance. It isn't yet possible to determine whether the monitoring of American citizens has been put into action, but it can be confirmed that ByteDance expects to obtain location information from the device of the monitored person, and the use of such information is clearly irrelevant to commercial purposes such as advertising. Forbes also obtained relevant documents and records of ByteDance's enterprise collaboration platform, Feishu. It has learned that TikTok's internal supervision department mainly uses a data request system called Green Channel. Using the Green Channel, they obtain relevant information from China on American employees. ByteDance responded that TikTok doesn't collect precise location data of American users. In other words, TikTok doesn't monitor American users in the way that Forbes reports. But even on the Chinese Jihu website, the equivalent of Quora, a social Q&A website, you can easily find some trace of what TikTok is up to. In an article titled, Why the Overseas Version of Douyin, TikTok is Banned, the author said that he was working on a project. This project was initiated by Douyin, which unites various domestic IT companies to do data processing. It's to translate the videos uploaded by foreign users to TikTok into Chinese. The article wrote, this is a super huge data collection which is currently spread almost all over the world. 
The languages currently involved are English, Spanish, Hindi, Japanese, and more. This data collection on the surface seems to be just for the development of translation AI. What actually goes deeper is the content revealed by these videos and voices, including recorded user habits and so on. The author proudly commented, China can't develop the system, can't capture the market of hardware, but still wants to get the foreign social data. What to do? Invented software, ah. So TikTok is super successful. What's been the most successful part is to have captured the latest global data in the form of both picture and voice for China. So why does the CCP need all this big data? We agree with the view that TikTok is an important tool for the CCP to carry out cognitive operations. Cognitive operations go beyond spreading disinformation online. Cognitive warfare is to precisely target specific groups to carry out cognitive attacks and to send messages that can cause cognitive changes among this group. The gathering of personal data then is the basis of such a war, and the willingness of young users to share personal bits and pieces on the addictive app TikTok seems boundless. Personal information includes information such as date of birth, ID card number, etc., and further collection of favorite videos, internet consumption patterns, behavior patterns such as which advertisements and videos are of interest, and even GPS positioning and other information. With this information and through big data analysis, people can be accurately assessed and classified, facilitating future cognitive attacks. For example, if some people have participated in rallies, marches, or protests, TikTok can grasp the political leanings of the people, target their interests, and deliver information that appeals to them and can cause cognitive bias. Data collection based on which to conduct propaganda and brainwashing is something that the CCP is very good at. We believe that this combination of tactics will have a very large impact on Western countries. The CCP has a sophisticated and almost untraceable brainwashing technique. There is a case in point for reference. During the Korean War in the 1950s, American soldiers were captured and released back to the U.S. during the POW exchange. The U.S. Department of Defense and the CIA discovered a peculiar situation when they interviewed them. All the American POWs held by the Chinese Communist military had a great change in their thinking, and they supported the Chinese Communist government. During World War I and II, many American soldiers were also POWs, but after they were released, their values were still American values. The CIA found it very strange that the CCP had brainwashed these POWs and thus coined the term brainwash. Now, the governments of many Western countries are aware of the huge risk. Former U.S. President Donald Trump tried to shut down social media apps TikTok and WeChat in 2020, citing security risks posed by their ties to the CCP. Facts have proved that the former president's judgment was correct. In 2019, the U.S. Federal Trade Commission, FTC, fined ByteDance's TikTok $5.7 million for illegally collecting the names, email addresses, and addresses of minors under the age of 13. TikTok UK is also facing scrutiny and a £27 million fine. The UK's Information Commissioner's Office, ICO, accused TikTok of breaching the Children's Data Protection Act by failing to maintain the privacy of children using the platform over the past two years. On February 23, 2023, the Canadian Privacy Commissioner announced a joint investigation into the TikTok platform with the Privacy Commissioners of Quebec, British Columbia and Alberta. TikTok is now banned in the U.S. government system. Immediately after, Canada announced that from February 28th, government-issued devices wouldn't be able to use TikTok, and government employees wouldn't be able to download TikTok in the future. We're making the decision that uh, for government uh, employees, for government equipment, um, it is better uh, to not have them access TikTok uh, because of the concerns uh, that people have in terms of safety. Uh, this may be a first step, it may be the only step we need to take, but every step of the way we're going to be making sure uh, we're keeping Canadians safe. And certainly I suspect that uh, as government takes the significant step of uh, telling all federal employees that they can no longer use TikTok on their uh, on their uh, work phones, uh, many Canadians from businesses to private individuals will reflect on the security of their own data and perhaps make choices in consequence. But I'm always a fan of giving Canadians the information for them to make uh, uh, the right decisions for them. 
Three major EU institutions, the European Parliament, the EU Executive Committee, and the EU Council have imposed a ban on TikTok on work devices. The European Parliament's ban was announced on February 28th and takes effect on March 20th, and has also advised members of the European Parliament and public sector employees to delete TikTok from their personal devices. Uh, like many other institutions, the European Commission uh, um, uh, 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 has, as you know, and this was the beginning of the, of the mandate, a very strong focus on cyber security, protecting uh, our, our colleagues. So the reasons why this has been, uh, the decision has been taken is to protect the Commission cyber, uh, to increase the Commission cyber security. Also, the measure aims to protect the Commission against cyber security threats and actions which may be exploited for cyber attacks against the corporate environment of the Commission. On February 27th, Japan announced as well a total ban on TikTok for smartphones used by government employees who handle classified information. Some members of Congress in the U.S. are looking to step up that effort. On December 13, 2022, Republican Congressman Mike Gallagher and Senator Marco Rubio introduced bipartisan legislation to ban TikTok from operating in the U.S. Gallagher called TikTok a digital fentanyl that has gotten Americans hooked. He said, It's also an increasingly powerful media company that's owned by ByteDance, which ultimately reports to the Chinese Communist Party, America's foremost adversary. Allowing the app to continue to operate in the U.S. would be like allowing the USSR to buy up the New York Times, Washington Post, and major broadcast networks during the Cold War. No country with even a passing interest in its own security would allow this to happen, which is why it's time to ban TikTok and any other CCP-controlled app before it's too late. On March 1st, members of the U.S. House Foreign Affairs Committee voted 24-16 to approve deterring America's Technology Adversaries Act. It gives President Joe Biden the authority to ban TikTok and other social media applications accused of endangering national security. However, Democrats on the committee oppose the bill. It appears that the proposed nationwide ban on TikTok in the U.S. may face an even tougher battle.